Okay, let's go. Is I this on YouTube or? We are live. No, this is on Facebook right now. So uh, uh, it's uh yeah, I don't know, the YouTube thing is taking a while to get it. Oh, there we go. Now let's share it to the page. Boom. And I think yeah, we are we are good to go. So anybody that's watching this and you want to comment, let me know. It sounds good. Let me know that it sounds good, Yoeli, Zach. If it sounds good, it's all good. And you guys can come in on Skype and join in. Uh, if you guys have been wanting to do this and you don't have the Skype name, you got to go to the Patreon page to do it. Patreon.com slash Hey Rob. All right. But anyways, we're not going to waste too much time. So the new Eminem, uh, well, it's a logic track, right? Why don't you tell me, I got Eddie on the line right now. Tell, tell me what's up with this track. Uh, I mean, I don't know much about it. All I know is that Eminem and logic collaborated on a track. It's called, it's a, it's a logic officially. It's a logic track featuring Eminem though. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I listened to it and honestly dude, like at first, I'll be completely honest with you. When I first heard it, I was like, well, this is probably my least favorite Eminem thing I've ever heard. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how you start with everything. Literally everything <laughs> yeah. that you fucking listen to, you immediately go, at first, dude, I mean, this is literally the worst shit I've ever heard. This is literally, <laughs> this is easily top five worst things that's ever been put in my ears. Every single time. And then a week later, you go, you know what's actually pretty good? Is that where you were going with that? It's actually pretty good? I still don't like it that much. I'll be honest. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest. And I've been honest. Like I talked, I talked so much crap about Marvel and then my, my, I flipped and all of a sudden I loved it. So but I, that I, just makes you look like a jerk. Well, do, do you say, like looking like a jerk? I'm not trying to be a jerk. I either like it or I don't. And this song is at first I was like, man, I really don't like this. And then it, it, it grew on me a little bit. So maybe I'll listen then, a little then more why, then, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Why did you share your opinion? Like, was it just an argument? Like, it was like, oh, this is a good, a good fucking way to argue. I'm going to just tell him I hate it, even though you had no opinion. I'll <laughs> like, be honest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because you think like I'm not honest. Argument. No, that set off a two hour argument. And you, you really didn't even have a true opinion. This is the, it, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. My true opinion. I listened to it in my car. I've blown out the speakers in my car because they turned shit up way too loud. Blew out the speakers, that's so awesome. that's that's probably why <laughs> why it didn't sound good. <laughs> and then listening to my headphones, I'm like, I can actually understand his lyrics and stuff. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's it's not that bad. It's it's not my favorite oh, Eminem. Which brings us to the point of this stream and this discussion. We are talking about our favorite our favorite eminem so i'll let you go first we're gonna we're just go right into it from 10 to 1 what is your 10th what a, favorite eminem song what, what so i'm gonna give i'm gonna give my 10th and then you give your 10th and we're gonna go back yep. and forth like that we'll do it in that order yes okay, okay. um so i just want to mention two honorable mentions though um they're newer eminem songs from albums i didn't really listen to and i didn't pay attention till today and there's a song called Beautiful and a song called A Rose that are two songs that I can relate to right now in my life. So those are two honorable mentions for sure. Anyways. I've never heard number of Number 10. Or maybe I have. They're I just don't really. Where, where the album is from? Beautiful is off of Relapse. And, and other than that track, that album literally can go in the garbage. That album can literally, like, if Eminem can go back, I'm sure he will from, fucking from not. From Relapse? Piece of shit album. Relapse is a piece of shit album. Well, hold on. Oh my God. First of all, you know what? I need I need to have I need to be able to look at what you're talking about right now because I think you're insane. So Oh my god, dude. If if Eminem anybody, doesn't like that album. Eminem doesn't like that. He hates that album. That album. Literally so, said he could throw that shit in the trash can. He literally said that in, in the next album. I think it's recovery. I'm trying to I'm trying to look for the track and listing I, <laughs> and it's and just I like listened the to, definition. And I listened to Relapse today and oh my god, what a piece of shit album. But I, they have one good song on there. So I loved I loved awesome. two songs a lot. I loved um My Mom. I I think that's that song is just uh, rad. And then I, uh, I'm over and then uh, insane. I was born with a dick in my brain. Yeah, fucked in the head. Like, whoa, Ugh. like we're just gonna go for yeah. it. Um, nah, not, all those songs not, are not trash. My not, not my favorite. Hello? Yeah. You're gone. Hello? Am, am I back? Am I back? Yo, okay. you're gone. Oh, no. This is not good. 
Do you hear me? Let me try. Oh, we lost them. We lost them, folks. Let's see if we could get Eddie back in. There he is. Can you hear me? There you are. Cool. All right. So, all right. Enough of the banter. What is your number? What is your number ten? Number ten would be the uh, off the newest album he came out. Kamikaze would be the Ringer. <sighs> that would be my number ten for sure. That shit was just. That was like Eminem returned to form, dude. That was. He came out the way that I like to hear Eminem fucking attacking everybody. Lyrical fucking genius, you know, like playing the word, you know, um, sorry, I'm kind of out of it, but, uh, uh, you know, really good wordplay, really good fucking, you know, way he uses the words and how he fucking uses the whole mumble rap thing, but actually using lyrics and just attacking everyone and basically proving that he's a genius, you know, proving that he's the best at, at even their style of rapping. He can fucking body it, you know? Yeah, see, that's the whole thing. Like, look, obviously you of all people will be able to tell me I am very ignorant to hip hop. I don't know a whole lot of artists. I mean, I, I know as much as the casual, but I know that when I listen to, as you call it, mumble rap, as I call it, mumble rap or trap rap, well, whatever we just, call that's it. Just, right? That's just the, that's like an insulting term, but it's just kind of like that's it's one of those things where it just literally took over you know what i mean it's, it's it caught wind you know yeah and and so uh it's officially yeah it's trap rap mumble rap whatever you want to call it right so, so the point is that a lot of them just they f lyrics are the second right secondary to mm -hmm, the whole just mm -hmm. vibe of it all the vibe the melody yep so uh, what eminem did yeah. is he went i can do you plus me and I'm going to do you do better you, than you. <laughs> I'm going to do you the way you guys should be doing you. Yeah. The, and and if, it was fucking fantastic hearing that. It was yeah. awesome. And that was another one of those where it, it threw me off a little bit because it was like, well, I don't necessarily like this style of, of music, let alone this style of hip hop. And, mm. and so once I just got it, it was like, wow, dude, this guy's insane. But yeah, it, it brought him back and just the kamikaze was the perfect name for the album. It's just like I'm just gonna mm -hmm. go in if if people might kill me, fuck it. <laughs> if my career ends. If my career ends after this. Then oh well. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, my that was fantastic. My number ten is oh, here we go. Some is a cliche, quite a well known song. Um, <laughs> it, it, Lose yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you lose yourself go. first of all the, it's mom's spaghetti go. Go. uh mine is cleaning out my closet uh, oh jesus christ dude it's <gasps> dude you can't hate on things that just because people like them you know but <laughs> the thing is like i remember just listening to him and when i was just casual and i didn't really i wasn't a true true fan and i remember listening to him on a flight and mm -hmm. I, like he was so straight to the point and this was the song that really made me a fan of his and i, it, I, I like the beat of the song the beat of that song is really good but you're you enjoy singy rap a uh, singy eminem huh like you enjoy his singing verse i mean choruses right yes because i can't fucking handle his voice dude i love it i i i actually don't like I don't, I don't like the features, to be honest. To, or like when he has a, someone singing, I'm like, I, I don't know if I like you. Like I like Eminem. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Dude, no. But I when, like to me, he was, voice. he's singing straight to his mother, and he says, he says, but guess what? You're getting older now, and it's cold when you're lonely. And Nathan that's growing up so quick, he's gonna know that you're phony. And Haley's getting so big now, you should see her. She's beautiful, but you'll never see her. She won't even be at your funeral. That's like, Jesus. Ex you know That's what I mean? Hate. That's hate. Dude. That's pure, pure hatred. And he says, so, see, what hurts me the most is you won't admit you was wrong. Bitch, do your song. Keep telling yourself that you was a mom. Like, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. And you got to think, like, the way it impacted me back then was like, fuck me. Yeah. And, and then, so these lyrics were just so straightforward to me. I, I, I loved them. But then... You go from that into Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre was an important part of all this. That beat, like you said, mm -hmm. I learned that beat on drums, and it's a weird beat. It's like, but, 
fucking. Did Dre do that beat, or was that M Eminem's? Was he producing his own shit by now? Um, to be honest, I don't know actually. Uh, it says know, songwriters know, like, Jeffrey Irwin bass on here. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if Eminem produced it or not. I don't know. It sounds like a dark. Only because, yeah, no. If it's a Drake beat, sick. But um, because Eminem's production too is kind of hard to listen. I don't like some. Like he did. Uh, he did like a soundtrack for people who were signed to his uh, label, and that soundtrack was whack because of his beats. Really? <laughs> I hate his beats, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really know which ones are his too much, so I can't even. Sometimes I can tell. Sometimes I can tell, but no, the beat on this one is sick though. So it is maybe sick. It's, not it's very his. dark, and I love the video. He's like digging a grave and shit, and it's just so dark and mm-hmm. perfect, like Wayne Isham video, or or, yeah. I th- or unless it was uh, I can't remember his name, the Asian guy, um, who made sick ass videos too. Um, all I feel right, well, like, I, f- I feel like that song. This it's just because. The thing is, dude, uh, I know I paint myself as an Eminem hater, and I'm really not. Eminem's, a, I'm a big Eminem fan. He's like, like the first artist. Like when I first started being conscious about liking music, he was the first artist I was a fan of, right? Um, and so I'm like listening to music today, or all his albums. I had 65 songs that I had to pull from to pick 10 out of those, right? Yeah. So that's how many good songs he has. But the reason why this one didn't make my list is because I'm tired of hearing about his mom. <laughs> Straight up. I, I like, understand, and which is why, for me, um, when I when I first heard it, I, I, I obviously I knew he was he would uh, like talk shit on his mom or whatever in his songs. But and this one was like the first time I ever really paid attention, and it didn't it wasn't comical to me. He mm. was angry. He was yeah, actually yeah, yeah. spitting venom, like pure just. You want like he imagine he, imagine you know being I mean? a fuck a, his mother imagine being a mother and your daughter talking to you like that oh my god can you imagine being in her shoes no, I don't fuck. want unless, to unless unless she's truly like an evil person and truly doesn't care but if I was a father and my son or daughter was talking to me like that oh my god yeah exactly <laughs> exactly exactly and that's what just struck me and then even in the beginning because I remember that he did the Elton John performance when and, and there was people protesting outside the grammys and it's and mm. that's literally the opening line he's like have you ever been uh hated or or what is it i, I think I have, I have it right here still but yeah yeah he yeah. says picket signs for my wicked rhymes look at the times <laughs> it's like mm. dude people literally picketed it against them that's yeah. so insane oh yeah so that's what, insane that's what made him sick though man he he uh he was protested against and he would talk about it in his raps. You know what I mean? Like he didn't hide, he didn't hide, uh, he was his personal honest. life. Too honest. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish sometimes, I just wish some of his song, the songs themselves were better on some things. So some of them would have made my list. I just didn't put them on there because the song was too cringy to me. You know, a lot mm. of it was the, a I lot have of, some of that too. Hooks. A lot of it were the hooks. The hooks were like really like the choruses were just really hard for me to just like justify. But then he'll come into a verse and I'm like, fuck, this is so good, you know? Yeah, totally. All right, well then let's get to nine. What is your number nine? Number nine off of probably my favorite album of his, especially like from listening today, definitely my favorite album. And it's uh, the Slim Shady LP. It's Rock Bottom. I love the way it starts. This song goes out to all the happy people. <laughs> oh my gosh. All the happy people who have real nice lives and shit and have no idea what it's like to be broke as fuck. <laughs> I love that the way it begins. Wow. And, I, I don't even know that song. That's, you don't know that song? Uh uh-uh. uh. I was actually going to listen to that song. That song is so sick. It's like, I feel like I'm walking on a tightrope without a circus net. Popping, well, it's like I'm popping Percocets or some shit like that. So he's talking about his pen addiction even back then. Wow, that is insane! Like, it's like it's the course. The course is what basically made it number the best for me because uh, he just says rock bottom when your life makes you mad enough to kill. And you know that it's rock bottom when your life makes you mad enough to kill. It's rock bottom. You know, still not ringing any bells. No, I never really that- listened to the Slim Shady LP, which is that oh, shows my dude, ignorance. You're crazy! That's literally my favorite album, dude. Wow. Well, see uh, that um, that's the, the beauty of this. So you're educating me. I get to listen to that now and learn and and discover. Yeah, dude, you gotta listen to that fucking album front to back, and uh, dude, if you don't like at least half, like it seriously, I had to cut, like I had maybe half that, if not more half than half of that album in my list. 
I had to cut it down. Dude. I love that album. That album is fantastic. Damn. Well, and you, and you know, Dustin actually tried to show that to me, but I never did. Um, Who? Dustin. Uh, I don't know. Dustin, my brother-in-law. <laughs> Big bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. I'm I'm forgetting. Okay, my bad. My bad, Dustin, if he hears this. I know yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Anyways. All right, so you're number nine. Uh, I'm trying to look up the lyrics so I have it ready here. Um, but uh, uh, this was a little weird for me. It's a little controversial, but I have a legit reason why I I choose this one. Because it defines Eminem and his whole career. And why... He, okay, at that time, yeah, he was the first... I mean, okay, there was Vanilla Ice, but he was the first like white rapper who we took seriously as a gnarly gangster type oh, no, or whatever, yeah, right yeah. And not even gangster just he was just gnarly he was just gnarly right and and yeah and so the thing that separated him aside from that which was obviously a huge deal and his obvious skills was the fact that he hated on himself and mm. he was never afraid to talk shit about how terrible his life is and his addictions and how much of a piece of shit he is, let alone mm -hmm. from his circumstance. He never like he passed blame onto his mother in a circumstance, but he also took responsibility for his own flaws. And I think this song, this verse actually just, or puts it all together. And that is the final rap battle from the eight mile movie. Um, Does that I, count? That's what, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. Does that count? That doesn't count. I think it. I think it does. But like, uh, I mean, it, I guess if you wrote it, but <laughs> the, exactly, and he rapped it, and we heard him. Gotta... Although he was under the moniker B Rabbit, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it might not count. But no, this, it counts. I'll this count it. this line summarizes Eminem in a nutshell, especially at that point. He says, "This guy ain't no motherfucking MC." I know everything he's about to say against me. Like, damn. Like, I, I just took your ammo, used it on myself. Now what do you got? And then he goes on to say everything that is insecure about his life. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he uses on like, Haley's song as well. He says the line, my insecurities could eat me alive. And that's why I relate so much. It's not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a white dude. It's not that that didn't matter to me. It was just like listening to this guy, look at his own insecurities and just put him out there and just say, I don't care. Like, this is me. And this is, this is what I'm about, you know? Yeah, no. Right. And, and that he's, he's different. He's definitely uh, different in rap for that reason. Cause rap is like 90% fucking bragging about how fucking dope you are and how sick you are and how many girls you sleep with and how many of your friends, girls you take and blah, 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 blah. And Eminem, Eminem is like vulnerable and talks. Well, that's a big thing with a lot of SoundCloud rappers too, or a lot of rappers today are all starting to become that way. They're starting to become vulnerable and starting to talk. You know what I mean? Starting Emo to rap. Talk about, yeah, they're starting to talk about their hit, their you know, um, mental issues or whatever. But Eminem did that from the beginning. You know, basically called out all his flaws from the very. I mean, the song that I just told you about, talking about popping per Percocets. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. So he's al yeah. he's always he's always uh he's always been vulnerable on in his music, which is awesome. And then he's also been like a typical rapper, fucking bragging about his skills, like you know, what I mean, because he knew he had them, and that's what you do in hip hop. If you don't brag about yourself a little bit, then what are you doing, really? Yeah, and that especially especially from the world where he comes from, where it is about rap battles. And, you know, mm -hmm. that and, and mm -hmm. it is a sport to him, you know, and mm -hmm. I just I love it when it goes from here. Fuck a beat. I'll go acapella. Fuck a pop yeah. a dog. Fuck a clock. Fuck a trailer. Fuck everybody. <laughs> fuck y'all. If you doubt me, I'm a piece of fucking white trash. I'll say it proudly and fuck this battle. I don't want to win. I'm Audi here. Tell these people something they don't know something about they don't me. Know about me. Oh, yeah. gosh. It's a classic. It's a classic, man. <laughs> that that definitely was fucking huge when it came out and then literally everybody started fucking rap battling at mojave after this movie came out oh yeah i i, re I remember there's like rap battle circles cyphers everywhere after this movie came out and i don't know if they were always there we just never noticed or and this movie made us notice or truly people were like oh i want to be a fucking rapper too because this movie was the last time i fucking remember uh 
I guess you can call this a biopic. Like, this is probably one of the best top three biopics, dude. Yeah. Think about it. Would you consider this a biopic? Um, it is. Yo. Um, yo. Damn, you lose. You lost me again. Yo. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Call right back. He'll, he'll be back on. Let's see if we got him. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Cool. Dude, this thing is a piece of crap. Um, I don't. I don't necessarily consider it a biopic, or as some call it, a biopic. Um, be, yeah, whatever. because he does, <laughs> he does take on, um, different monikers and by, by the actual definition, mm, it's biography, it's not that's necessarily true, that's following true. that of Marshall Mathers per se. It's based off his life, but not really his it, life. It's yeah. So it's an odd thing. I, I'm not sure which is Eminem. That's another thing that he does, but all right. So let's mm-hmm. move on then. What is your number eight? My number eight is, hold on, let me pull it up. Oh, okay. It's actually... Um, like I said, Eminem was the first rapper, first music artist, first person I actually ever followed. And this was the first song I actually ever wanted to learn lyric. And I would lyrics for lyric. And back in the day, they used to just record shit off the stereo. You remember like with your cassette tape? Oh, hell yeah. I used to stay up for days trying to find hot for teacher on comp. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So I waited for the song to come on pretty much after school all day. And then finally they had recorded it. And then I would listen to it over and over again and rewind and write down the lyrics because I wanted to learn this song so badly. So I would rewind it, rewind it, write the lyrics down. And then wrap it and then rewind it again and keep doing it until I finally wow. got the whole song. Yeah. And it's the way I am um, off of Marshall Mathers LP. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, dude. And that it's didn't a, that didn't make I my top back, 10. It back. almost did. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I only I only put it in there actually because of my uh, – because of the nostalgia for me. But this song is fat, fucking awesome, dude. This song, he's basically calling people out. That's what I really like about Eminem. Is just, he calls everyone out with no fucking holds bar. Calls out fans, calls out executive, fucking calls out the music industry, calls out everybody. Absolutely. I love it. I, I agree with that. And I was listening. I'm like, nah, this one's definitely got to be there. But I just have a different relationship with a lot of these songs is why. Mm. So, like, some of them are just are on their because of where they fit into my life and a lot of it has to do with warming up for shows and things like that mm-hmm. but uh and so they're I just mean, it's, a part of my life but that song oh my gosh another one of those beats it's an odd time awesome uh, that's definitely that's definitely a dre beat too and i just it's just fucking awesome he sits there and he's like dude i'm not mr instinct i'm not what your friends think you know what i mean oh, and then the line where he's like a, a dude shoots up. Uh, what's it? A dude gets bullied up in schools and shoots. Uh, was it? Was it? I'm fucking. I'm losing when my a mind. A dude's getting bullied and shoots up yeah. his school and they blame and it, they on, blame Maryland. it on Maryland. Fucking and calling out the media and the heroin. And where were the parents at? One hundred fucking percent, dude. And I still agree with that shit today. Absolutely, man. And that song is. And then that's shit, the thing. That time, right? Dude, it was it was huge. Like Columbine was like. It's sad that you know Columbine was just like pales in comparison to what happens today, but. Um, it was all over the media and they were blaming, trying to find people to blame. How ridiculous is it that they blamed Marilyn Manson, you know? And Eminem was the only one to call him out on that, called the media out on that. Dude, and he even got him in the video. How dope is oh, that? Oh, he put him, and then got him, no, got him in the video and he's like doing this weird ass fucking dance, dancing in the background. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like this feminine dancing. Yeah. Dude, that, that yeah. video, that song is so sick and it's a lost time because some of the words he said on the song you can't say it today. Dude, like this the is what this is what is the one you won't put up. No, this is the best part and I didn't include uh White America as well, but oh, that, I hate that song. But that one I hate, was close. Look, but see, I like that I like that song lyrically. I hate that song cuz of the chorus. I know and exactly. Exactly. Like just listening mm-hmm. it's not it's it's kind of it gets a little boring I guess for lack of a better mm-hmm. term. Even mm-hmm. though I don't think it's a boring song. But he says the line in the way I am he goes Middle America now it's a tragedy now it's so sad to see in upper classity having this happening. Then attack oh, Eminem cuz I rap this way. It's yep. like what do we do? And with when it, that's why it, it is important that he was a white guy. It really is because oh, now was. now now he comes in and it's just like well, it's that guy's fault. Just the same way when Elvis got big, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's that guy's fault. It's like, mm-hmm. no, nah, he's dude. poisoning. He's poisoning the pe- uh, our our kids, our students. That's that Margaret Thatcher shit when they wanted to put stickers, the parental advisory stickers on all of it. 
you know, the big dirty dozen and shit. It's yeah. that kind of mentality. It's that kind of mentality that, you know, criminalizes Eminem and Maryland artists, you know? Dude, but there's there, there's a... I mean, I struggle with that concept as well. And I've talked about it a few times on our, on our conversations is, you know, censoring oneself in hopes of not polluting someone's mind, particularly a young person mm-hmm. who's listening to music and are easily influenced and looking 100. for idols. Yeah. So you don't want to put the wrong message out, but there's sometimes I think there's a fine line and Eminem's, some of his ridiculous lyrics are, they're so clearly tongue in cheek that it's just like you can't take it seriously and it's up to the parents mm. to steer their children into understanding that. But that, but that, I don't think it's too tongue in cheek, dude. I think he's truly being like, yo, where the fuck were the parents at? No, no, you know but what I mean? that, like, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. You're missing my point is that on those crazy songs when he's Slim Shady, they're so ridiculous oh, over the top. Oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a goof. He's using parts of his life, but it's still, uh, it's still supposed like, to be funny. But then like that one this is serious. Like, he said, what does it say? Like, um, you know, what does it say? Um, 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 Tom Green can hump a dead moose, but it's, a, well, it's a fucking uh-huh. lyric, dude. I, I can't think. I have to <laughs> My bum is on your the, lip. My bum is on your lip. And, what is it? My bum is Real on your slim, lip. shady lyrics. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, well, anyways, whatever. But I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Like, he's saying some crazy, funny lyrics, but if you're actually listening and picking it apart, he's speaking truth in those lyrics. Yeah, I'm trying to. So. I'm trying to find that that line so we can remember real quick, and then we'll go. I, it's crazy how I can't think of it because I I'm like one of those people who needs like the beat, and then I'll fucking go. But if you try to have me go Al Capet, I'll fuck it up. Right, <laughs> <laughs> that is for, especially with his because there's so freaking many, dude. It's ridiculous. Yeah, dude. Is uh, it off a? Of, uh, is it off a? Of, uh, real Slim Shady, please stand up. The sometimes sometimes i want to get on tv and just let loose but can't but it's but cool can't. for tom green to hump a dead to moose, hump a dead moose. Hump yep. on your lips. <laughs> that's crazy and, then, and then that's then the message we deliver to little kids and expect them to not know a woman you know what i mean where it's like a woman's, where a woman's quitters is yep it's exactly. crazy eminem yeah. especially at that time freedom of speech that's so He's like, yeah, I probably got a couple of screws up my head loose, but no worse than what's going on in your parents' bedroom. Oh, my God, yeah. dude. Yeah. Fucking love it. Like, literally, all those lyrics. And then he has ad-libs in the back of all that, you know? Yeah, all those and little. all those. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> all the, the slurps and shit. Oh, man. And That's all dude. those fucking, all those lyrics and all those lines and shit. He's literally just fucking calling out middle America. Which I think you know, that wait he's, call, he's calling the hypocrisy of the of the nation's like mindset. You know how the nation always has like this not, consensus across the nation about you know whatever mindset, and Eminem called that out during that time. Absolutely, dude. But you and did say that. when you're talking about the little sound effects and those little things that he has. So I'm I'm glad you said that because it'll transition to mine and why I like my eighth favorite one. Forgot about no, Dre. Wait, wait. One, two, three. Yeah, you're eighth. Okay. Yeah, forgot about Dre is my eighth I love favorite. That. And love that. and the reason being is because he paints such a picture, man. You like he has he tells a story and for it, it's not like I thought there was anything like like it's the kind of the opposite of this song where he doesn't really have a whole lot of shit to actually say, but it's mm-hmm. just how he says it. And you could just picture every single thing dude and it's so fucking mm-hmm. dope and that's that's, that's uh, if nothing thing else that that's like good. what's his best to me is when he's painting a yes. picture for you you know like Actually, if, if i say it to you like immediately you'll know exactly exactly what i'm saying when i go so what do you say to somebody you hate <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anybody, anybody you, know what I, you know what i mean like the story he's telling one day i was walking by with a walkman on walkman. when i caught a guy give me a knock with eyes <laughs> and i strangled him up so in the I parking lot with, <laughs> <laughs> i don't give a fuck if it's dark or not my harder than me trying to park a dodge when i'm drunk as fuck right next to a humongous truck in a two-car garage hopping out with two broken legs trying to walk it off fuck you two bitch fuck call, you the two call the cop fuck you, you and the loud ass motherfucking dogs yeah so it's just <laughs> Like, you're visualizing all this shit, dude. Oh, dude. And it's so sick. And, like, you can hear the dogs yeah, barking in the background. Rup, rup. That's <laughs> like, yeah. Genius, dude. I wonder if he's in charge, if he does that. I think that's his idea because Dre's never really done ad libs like that in, like, his old, his other albums. 
but they're littered all over Eminem's album. So that's that's got to be all him. And this is an Eminem chorus that he's not singing in, but he does sound great in. Nowadays, everybody want to talk. Like they got, you know, that's so that's sick, sad, But nothing comes out dude. when they move the lips. It's just a bunch of gibberish. And motherfuckers act like they forgot about Dre. And it's basically defending Dre. Yeah, the best, at this time. The best part is this, I'm going to kill you and them lot of folks fucking barking dogs <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's, another stupid thing. Dog. that's another thing that eminem that's a, another thing that eminem has always done and what hip-hop really is is painting and telling stories dude that's what it has in common with country is uh, uh, hip-hop the best hip-hop can give you like a visual a visual of what they're saying you know what i mean for sure the storytelling of it well let's keep yeah. it moving a little faster though because we're already at a damn half hour and we're barely not Fuck. even a quarter of the way <laughs> so Are what's you your no, what's your number seven then uh, my number seven, dude, uh, it's actually, I like it a lot because of how ridiculous it is. Um, I love the way it starts, you know, it's like a lot of people ask me a lot of stupid fucking questions and he's talking about how it's like all the things I say on a record and all the things I, I talk about record when I do it in real life, you know, I'm, you know where I'm going with this. Yep. And then he goes, if you, you believe got that, right. if you, you know believe why? that too, then yep. I'll kill you. <laughs> then I'll kill you. You know why? Because I'm a criminal. criminal. Oh, dude. The fucking beat is so sick, dude. I love that song. It's the final song on the Marshall Mathers LP. A lot of people ask me st- stupid fucking questions. Yeah, like, <laughs> criminal. Yeah, that song is just because of the, the, the song itself, dude. It's like over the top fucking um, just basically everything that he's been – people have been criticizing him at the time. Every. Everything that people has been throwing them at a time, he literally puts it all in one song. My words are just a, are like a dagger with a jagged edge. I'll stab you in the head, whether you're a fag or a les. Wow. <laughs> or a homosexual. Because he was getting a lot of criticism because of his, homo, his supposedly homophobic lyrics. So yeah. he literally just sat there and fucking... And then there's the part where he's like, hate fags? Question mark? Answer is yes. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to put... Like this. Homophobic? Nah, just heterophobic. Oh my god, uh. dude. <laughs> Dude, oh like he's God. and you're you're right. He addressed it with bravery and he just went he for it. Care. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's why I uh, you know as when I was in middle school when he performed with Elton John, it was such a like sick. It it was, it, it was so like there's musical moments that transcend a uh, certain yeah. time and create this event. That it's like you got the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan, you got Elvis on Ed Sullivan, yeah, you got yeah, Michael yeah. Jackson moonwalking, and you got you got Eminem mm-hmm. with Elton John. I remember that at the end of it, like he goes and he hugs Elton, and Elton had his back. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's all good. Elton had his back the whole time. You know why Elton had his back? Because that fucking dude understands what art is. Yep. And then it's Eminem art. just said looks it. at the crowd. He, said. he yep. looks at the crowd and braises both middle fingers up in the air. Like yep. damn, dude. So, I Every I mean, I rhyme, people think it's a crime. I love that shit. Just tell them what's on my mind. I guess I'm a criminal. Case in point, dude. Freedom of fucking speech. He's fucking talking, just rapping and are, are expressing what's on his mind, and people already want to fucking criminalize him. Yep. I just flip him the bird, but keep going. <laughs> Take shit from no one. I love it, dude. It's crazy, man. And I yeah, mean, so. here's the thing: is like he says so many evil things in his songs. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, a lot of them don't hold up today, dude. That's what's. Crazy. Oh, absolutely! His like song? you saying that, his hearing song? it, I'm like, oh, I just like it grabs Didn't you. Me. Cringe? I know. Hell you yeah! Cringe. And I cringe when I heard it, and I didn't want to put it on my on my list. But dude, I don't care. The song was fucking good, and the fact that I put it on my list is a tribute to Eminem. And that era, because wow. that dude said it. That dude said it, so I'm gonna put it on my list. It does. It, it does. <laughs> it does make you. Oh, it just makes your throat swell up a little bit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right but, I know. I know what you mean. But uh, there's at least four songs on the rest of mine that are coming up that do the same thing. It is crazy. Oh, but uh, make you cringe. Uh, 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 well, my favorite part with this song though is is uh, when he goes uh, when it goes into the skit part of it when the music drops out. Oh, at the end. And he's, he's like, robbing the girl. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to All right, kill just you. go up just in that motherfucker, in get the motherfucking money, and get the fuck up out of there, all right? All right, I'll be right yeah. here waiting for you. All right. Yo, M, what? Don't kill nobody this time. Ugh. Ah, all right. <laughs> motherfucker. Right <laughs> Can I help you? Yeah, I need to make a withdrawal. Okay, put the motherfucker. In the bag, bitch. I won't kill I won't, you. Please don't Wait, kill well, me. Oh God, please don't, don't kill, kill me. me. I'm not gonna kill you, bitch. Quit looking around. Don't kill me. <laughs> don't kill me. I said I'm not gonna fucking kill you. 
Don't kill me. Hurry the fuck up. Thank you. <laughs> like, he shoots. Oh my dude. god. <laughs> dude, but the thing is, what people don't get is that that's why Eminem fucking came up with the Slim Shady persona. Is that that was the Slim Shady persona, the fucking crazy psychopath, fucking hilariously like insane fucking like you can make a fucking crazy show about the slim shady dude persona. and and that's why like a lot of the discussion about eminem and that's why he's such a legend still is that it it really is a freedom of speech thing and art is so crazy like if you mm-hmm. look at um i know you haven't seen it but avengers endgame that just came out dude it already broke the record in its second week it is the highest gross movie period uh, you haven't seen it me. so you can't hate you can't hate because you haven't nah. seen it but uh, yeah. I was in your shoes, is all I'll say. I have no, no, no. intentions of seeing it. But uh, either way, though, my point being is that I know it's extremely fantasy and fictionalized, but, dude, people are still dying in that movie. You know what I mean? So yeah. there, there's all mm. this kind of stuff that's just it, – it is pretty gnarly. And, yeah, a lot of it is hard to listen to now as an adult and I got kids and I'm always, always second guessing everything I listen to and everything I watch. But like when I talked about Slayer, it's the same thing, dude. These are the thoughts that go on in this crazy person's brain. And he was young and he didn't understand a lot of things and he was just saying what was on his mind. And that's, that's, that's it. He was just openly like just putting it out there and he's grown and he's changed and he's done all these things as well and then it's crazy man it's it's weird to look back at this catalog i just think i just think the more like how crazy it is that we're fucking we're so centered in our speech and the way we talk with the pc thing that literally anything eminem did back then would not be allowed today so you're saying words words that he said are not allowed you so you're literally taking away free speech with this PC shit. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. it's it's uh it's scary and annoying, but whatever. Anyway, yeah. so it's, get, is it, it, I'm up, am I up? I think no, it's my turn. But people people learn too. That's at least the one good thing. But uh, then my song for almost the same <laughs> same ridiculous reason as these last three. My dad's gone crazy. This oh, was by dude. far the most annoying <laughs> song that he had. Same. My dad's gone crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, same reason why I didn't fucking add it to my shit is because I can't handle the. I just can't handle it, man. <laughs> right? And, like, I was like, uh, but here's the thing. So, one of my other ones, I'll just, I'll just say it right now, Till I Collapse is on this list for me. That was a pump up song for me. It worked because of the tempo of the beat. The, that do, do, ka. Do, do, God, we will rock you style beat. I used to warm up to that song and it's mm-hmm. the second to last song. And then my dad's gone crazy comes on next. So just out of not wanting to reach into my pockets or all that and get my phone to, to skip to a different song or something, it, I would just let it play. And I grew to really love all the stuff that's in this song. And um, although the chorus is still kind of weird, like, Dude, mm-hmm. I love the lyrics on the third verse so much. He says, my songs can make you cry, take you by surprise at the same time, can make you dry your eyes with the same rhyme. See, what you're seeing is a genius at work, which to me isn't work, so it's easy to misinterpret it at first because when I speak, it's tongue in cheek. I'd mm. yank my fucking teeth before I'd ever bite my tongue. I'd slice my gums, get struck by fucking lightning twice at once and die and come back as vanilla ISIS son and walk around the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> Spit on kid. Like, dude. Oh, oh my dude. gosh, dude. Like, it's so, it's so insane. And it says nine millimeter heater stash in two seaters with meat cleavers. This right here is That's the most it. important thing right here. This next line. I don't blame you. I wouldn't let Haley listen to me neither. What mm. the fuck? Like, like he knows mm. he's telling you. Why he's, are you letting your kids aware. listen to me? This is for adults to consume. You have he's to have so, you have sound mind. He's self-aware, one hundred percent. He's yeah. self-aware. It's, but that's, that's I don't know because the whole censoring kids, dude. I mean, how old were you when this album came out? Uh, this this one was like around oh one oh two somewhere yeah, around. So, so we were, were in high school. Yeah, so I mean, and then the uh, the two albums previous to this were a lot worse lyrically than this. And I was a fucking, I was less, I was a preteen or I was a teenager, a young teen, 12, 13 years old, dude. So 
too much censoring is not good because then your kid's going to be too sheltered to where they see something and they're going to completely get shocked and off of guard, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or completely, or completely go off the deep end. Like, I've seen stories where somebody, like, sees, like, the, hears the word, the F word for the first time and just goes off the deep end off of that and wants more, you know? It's yeah. a weird line. It's a weird line that you got to. Well, that's that's the struggle right now with my daughters is you don't want to, you know. No, they're too You don't want to sacrifice yeah. their innocence uh, no, too early, no, no, no. but you don't want to shelter them. You know, the world is real. Yeah. And, and so yeah. that's why there's steps how to it, gonna... you know. Yeah. Like, I literally like... asked Jessica yesterday. I'm like, how old? Uh, <laughs> when do you think we'll show the girls Eminem? <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> when they're 14. I'm like. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, that makes yes, sense. 13, that makes 13, sense. 13, 14 years old. I think they're old enough to like know that. Listen, this is tongue in cheek, you know. And then as they get older, like us, then they'll realize what the, what he's really saying, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it. Moving. Let's go a little faster now. You got number six. Okay. Go. Uh, number six is a, a D12 song. Actually, I don't know if you ever heard that D12 album. I I did hear it, but I vaguely remember. I didn't listen to it too much. I do remember that no? the single was the Purple Hills and Pills. Purple or whatever. Pills, yeah, Purple yeah. Pills. No, but uh, my my mine is a uh, song called Revelation, and uh, it's actually a song that yeah, a lot of these are songs that I related to when I was a kid, when these came out, I was actually a freshman at a different school before I went to Mojave with you guys. And this song is just, you know, it has the, it has the pink Floyd samples. Like, I don't want to go to school. I don't need no education. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I never so, heard the song, but I obviously I know the pink oh, Floyd okay. song. Well, you got, you got to check it out. So they have, it's not, the, it's not a sample, but it's just them re, re doing those lyrics. And then they just talk about, you know, crazy, bizarre con artists and all these other Swifties in there. Um, Proof is in there. All these guys are on there. And then just, if you think Eminem's fucking lyrics were ridiculous, D12 together, those lyrics were just over the top of insane. Wow. So this song was just about, this song was just about basically hating school, hating fucking, um, you know, just hating school and not wanting, wanting to go to school and just fucking wanting to fucking do crazy shit. <laughs> like Bazaar starts off a lyric. He's like, I want to kill myself, but I'm still debating. I'm in the front. I'm in the front of a Baptist church. Master B. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Satan. I think, I think I'm crazy. Cause I smoke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, dude. Dude. I was fucking, I was just related to this shit. Not because I'm masturbating in front of a church, but what I'm saying is just like the over the top, ridiculous lyrics to the, you know, I don't know, dude. I don't know how to. Explain yeah, it. I mean, look, look. There, there's, there are certain things that are meant to be of shock value. That's the truth. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. been, that's been the beginning of time because what happens is when you, when you do that, it's like, it, it allows you to be free as an artist. Um, there is certainly a difference between promoting such things and putting it out there i mean like yeah that's the thing is like well see that's the thing though this album has a mixture of both i mean eminem the one lyric on this album that i related to as a kid and fucking i still love today is when eminem I, i'm sure you heard it before but it's like he says my mother was unable to raise me i'm full of i'm full of crazy rage i'm an angry teenager nothing can change me back gangster rap made me act like a maniac oh my god dude it's basically time you know being raised on gangster rap damn that's it. There you go, man. Well, then here we'll get to my number six. Uh, this one, when it came out, took me by surprise because mm -hmm. this was when, to me, the I guess Eminem hiatus, self-induced but not actually ever called a hiatus, was officially over, and that was when he did forgot about Dre. Um, mm. I, Eminem. Like, you yep. mean Dre's hiatus? It it is officially a Dre song, but there's two Eminem verses in it to one Dre verse. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, and that that song for me was uh, sorry the babies were trying to come in here. <laughs> yeah. Like we're talking about Eminem, girls get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was uh, just how it seemed like it switched and like we we're just talking about the honesty and talking about insecurities and all those things like forgot about Dre. It's mm -hmm. like Eminem calls him or not forgot about Dre. Uh, I need a doctor. 
Eminem oh. calls him out. Eminem calls him oh, out. Oh, so you're talking about I need a doctor then? Yeah, no, what? I forgot about Dre. No, no, no. I'm talking because uh, we already did that one. Uh, I need a doctor. I need a doctor. That's your so, number five. That that's my number six actually. Um, number six. Okay, now I was so confused. I'm like, yeah, Dude, sorry. What hiatus? What are you talking? Sorry, about? sorry. No, it, I need a doctor because <laughs> forgot about Dre, Doctor Dre. I don't know. It's yeah. confusing. Um, but yeah, man, like. It's just, I just love the attack. I guess because after hearing an album full of accents, hearing a new Dre song, which was crazy. That was crazy itself. Yeah, and then that all those things, like crazy. hearing M sound angry again was so yes. mesmerizing to me. 100%. And, yeah. I, and I just, I just love like, like the second verse where he says, it hurts when I see you struggle. You come to me with ideas. You just, you say they're just pieces. So on puzzle. Cause the shit I hear is crazy, but you're even getting lazy or you don't believe in you no more. Seems like yeah. your own opinions, yeah. not one you can form second you questioning yourself, second guessing. It's almost like you're begging for my help. Like I'm your leader. You're supposed to be my fucking mentor. Like, I get dude, that, dude. Like, what's crazy shit. too, though, that, that one thing you're forgetting, one piece of the puzzle that you're forgetting is the, the, the rumors about detox were coming around this time, and it's like everybody was like, "Where is it at? Where is it at? Where's this album? Everybody's talking about mm -hmm. Dre's new album. Where is it at?" And then this comes out, and you're just like, "Oh shit!" That lyric, he just basically told everybody what's going on with that lyric. Exactly. He, that especially someone as gnarly as Dre, right? Like he mm -hmm. already he he. He's a mogul. He's a fucking billionaire. Um, yeah. Like he he went from producing these sam sampling things on the turntables to creating songs and just re revolutionizing hip hop and doing all these things. And then he was doing his own albums and they were sick. But he he took like eight years between album mm -hmm. one and album two. And then Isn't that's that crazy. That, <laughs> yeah. And then that's how it. fucking crazy is that. And this whole time, like, you're like, well, okay, I yeah, guess he then, just doesn't want to do it. He's focused on producing. Not even, he's though, beats. not even, though. Yeah, he's making beats. Like, in between those eight years, how many fucking hits did he have? He had so a many lot, hits a lot. with other artists. That's why he says it on one of the songs. He's like, when your album sales weren't doing too good, who's the doctor they told you to go see? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, like, he's had hits after hit after hit. But for himself, I think he's such a perfectionist that Dre couldn't do it for himself he was okay with giving everybody else like hits and shit and then uh for for himself he just kind of like fell flat i guess yeah and that's what and i'm then, saying that's like, what eminem was talking about on this song. like where where he's so insecure like you you almost accept it it's like ah dre's never gonna put out another record he's he's just yeah. not doing it anymore and this tells right. you like he actually does want to he's so scared to and mm. for eminem to call him out <laughs> like that's the, insane like you're my yeah, mentor dude. and like i'm calling you out and that's why the last verse of that part he goes you saved my life now maybe it's my turn to save yours but i can never repay you for what you did for me is way more but i ain't giving up faith and you ain't giving up on me get up dre i'm dying i need you come back for fuck's sake <laughs> like <laughs> with that eminem <laughs> intensity that we hadn't heard in like in seven years <laughs> i was like holy time. crap and we were hearing know. fucking we're hearing Jamaican accents on this shit. Oh Ridiculous. my god, dude! That I can't get over how bad that album is. Well, he ran them into the ground, <laughs> as he said. So, what's your number five? Let's keep it moving. Number five is just as a feature track. It's actually officially not an Eminem track. It's actually a Nicki Minaj track. It's called Roman's Revenge. Never. Heard Literally, of it. one of the fucking best collabs I've heard ever. I love this collab, and I put it on today because. I'm trying to compile my list. I'm like, I know there's a feature that I like. I don't remember what it was because it's so fucking gnarly. And I, and I remembered it was Nicki Minaj and I went to find it and I put it on again. Literally, I was like, yeah, this is making my list. I don't know where, but it's making my list. And as I'm ranking it, I'm like, dude, I can't put it lower than this. I can't put it lower than this. I can't put it lower than this. It's got to go above here. You know what I mean? Like, So you got to check that out. That's all I got to say. It's just basically Eminem and Nicki Minaj on this. It's really a Nicki Minaj track because... Because, uh, hold on. I, I haven't uh, really given her a chance, and you back her, but I never really just listened to her. I've always, I ain't I hating, just like this I just album. never heard her. No, I just like this album. I haven't heard anything other than this album, Pink Friday, all the way through. It's fantastic, dude. And then she is one artist that uses her voice as an instrument. 
she doesn't just rap. She raps. She it does inflections. She does sat noises with her voice. She just she'll rap. In she a, she was a on British a Kanye. Accent. She was on that Kanye song Monster, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she that's didn't want to, that's, that's crazy. Basically, dude, no, dude, listen to Roman's Revenge and and uh, even Eminem comes in, and then you're just like already like just oh man, Nikki's fucking sick, and then Eminem comes in and just fucking destroys destroys the fucking song, and then the beat does something different while he's rapping. Like he takes a break and then he comes back with more rhymes and the beat just like come kicks in. Oh dude, it's so sick. And then even Nicki Minaj, I think, I think on this song, she talks about like how Eminem just killed her. Like, she's like, Eminem just killed my own shit. I'm not, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, dude, you got to check that song out. That's just a feature. It's a song that I can't, I, I don't, I don't relate to it. You know what I mean? It's just a sick song sick beat sick back and forth like they each get i think two to three verses each and they just go back and forth dude it's seriously one of the dopest features like it feels like they were like in the room together which i know they weren't but yeah. it feels like they were in the room together just feeding off each other it's so sick you gotta check that song out for sure that's, I will that's do definitely that. a number five for me i trust you right, man. i do and, and then my my number five is is just almost the opposite is kim <laughs> Ah. <laughs> you want to talk about painting a picture that's that violent lyrics song. pushing the boundaries telling stories creating this whole new world like creating a atmosphere and a Ooh. cinematic journey and Ooh. just going ridiculous and literally just making you feel like you're there <laughs> you feel like you're watching it you feel you're scared for Kim because like, dude. nuts, dude. You're oh, so scared for her. Gosh, this song just like I was listening to it today. It's still if it, it makes me feel weird. It makes me mm -hmm. feel kind of like it, it, I feel uneasy when I hear this song. It's like mm -hmm. kind of scary and it just like I'm it's watching like, a it, horror movie and I feel like someone's chasing even, dude. me. It's weird. Like it's I feel like, like yeah. I'm listening to someone who is genuinely out of their minds and capable of evil that's what i hear in this song and, and oh then and then gosh. if you uh uh like if you like true crime if you're a person who likes fucking stories about husbands who do this and that you'll fucking obsess over this track you'll you'll love it for sure dude i mean when this track when, is crazy like towards like the last verse when he's like they're like out and you hear the ruffling of i guess yeah hey where are you going you know what i mean like <laughs> oh when she's running oh dude when she's running she's like screaming off her head he's like yeah go ahead yeah here i'll scream with you oh somebody help yep <laughs> you don't get it bitch no one can hear you fuck dude he was nuts dude it's like i'm not doing it justice but holy shit oh my how, gosh, like how dude. scary is that how scary is that you're running from someone who's trying to kill you yelling off the top of your lungs and he goes here let me scream with you ah somebody help <laughs> don't you get it bitch no one can hear you now shut the fuck up and get what's coming to you you were supposed to, You're love, supposed me. to love me now, now bleed, bleed bitch bleed bleed, <laughs> bleed oh bitch bleed bleed <laughs> like that, oh. like we're we're laughing and it's a, it's like a serious subject cuz this kind of shit happens all the time right but we're we're just talking about the art what a beautiful piece of fucking recorded art that was. Is all I'm saying. It's beautiful like, is one it way to made describe you, it. It made you feel things. It made you fucking picture it. You you were there. The beat worked with everything he was saying, and just like it was just amazing piece of fucking. Th like, what's the difference between this song and watching a uh, Jason a Jason movie? You know, there's no difference. There there is a difference, and I'll and I'll tell you what it is. Is because with with Jason the, having the R rating and you you get the sense that we're dealing in fantasy terms something not to be taken seriously not something there Ooh. although there is battles for censorship with movies and things and that's why there's rating systems yeah you don't get that but, that's that's someone it's a mythical character but in this mm, song, you it's someone that your kids look up to, that think is cool, that's real, that they can meet. They can't meet the character Jason. They might meet the actor underneath the mask, but 
they can meet Eminem and go to his show and he can sing this song in front of them. And this mm. song, when he played it know. live I mean, in Detroit, Kim was there. All she asked was not to play that song. He played it. He, she went back and slid her wrist. <laughs> That's like, are you fucking serious? That's a real, that's a real thing. Cause I, no, I'm not. That's like, a I, real story. I, that is like, if you watch the behind the music, the VH1 behind the music from back in the day, I, I watched it not too, too long ago. It's been a couple years, but yeah, that's a Holy real thing shit. that happened. Yeah. And on a side yeah, note, see, that's, our, that's, that's really personal to her. Exactly. Obviously. And so they have a long history. They have a long history of, of that kind of shit. And then the, the idea of someone, fucking literally murdering her in a song of course she's gonna fucking feel, get affected by that yeah this man we're dealing with a crazy psychotic person ultimately uh the ultimately the biggest reason why i i am i choose this song although now i'd probably cringe if i heard it for the first time is because of the bravery and the honesty and just the ability to put what's on one's mind down to paper and to recording that's, that's, and and to be honest with point. oneself you know and, and it's people do this kind of shit in therapy you know what i mean like they're like i've had these yeah, crazy exactly. thoughts about this and this and 100 you know what i mean yeah, they exactly. go to jail they they're they have to go to therapy and this person had the bravery to, exactly. to use music as his therapy. And that is freaking bananas. So let's move on from there then. That, that's going to okay. be the reoccurring theme, particularly with anything before, you know, the, the, the Marshall Mathers LP or, or from the Marshall Mathers LP earlier. So then number four, we're almost there. We're on the home stretch. Mm -hmm. What's your number four? Sorry. Uh, my number four is another one off the Slim Shady LP. It's more of a spoken word song, but listening to it today, I, I, I found myself repeating it like four times. Just It's just one of those songs that I've just, right now in, in my life, it's just, it really, it's just, it's just something I can relate to. Um, it's called If I Had. I don't know if you heard that one. It's really, he just sits there and she's like, I'm tired of, you know, he just repeats, I'm tired. He's like, I'm tired of backstabbing snakes with friendly grins. I'm tired of committing so many sins. Tired of always giving into the bottle of Henny, of the Henny wins, whatever. Tired of having, having any ends. I'm never having any ends. Tired of being broke, this and that, blah, blah, blah. He just repeats that over and over. It's more of a, of a spoken word track. It's, wow. it's awesome i love it i love it so that it's real simple um, but he's pouring his heart listen. i'm reading the lyrics right now and yeah 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 he's just like you know and then you can literally anybody can listen to the song and just you know take out whatever and put in your thing and these, these are the things that that are well, so friends, awesome friends with are uh, people think they're with uh with uh country country and hip-hop both do this so amazing tired of having to borrow a dollar for for gas to start my monte carlo and why he yeah. does that because now he's so real so real you know what i mean like we're not talking about my car or a vehicle or asking for like he's not trying to sugarcoat it or pull up like make it poetic. poetic he's just telling right. you straight up and, and then that makes thing, it more poetic that's that's what I was trying to tell you one time about like lyrics, how people, people, uh, sacrifice like what the song is about for a cheap lyric. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to be poetic. It's like, dude, stop trying to be poetic and just fucking tell me what the song is about. Tell me what you're really thinking. Not for, don't do no cliche lyrics. Just tell me straight out, you know? And although I haven't heard this song, uh, we're just reading through some of the lyrics. I, I can see why this like strikes with you because it's like damn dude like he's just being so just straight up and just like tired he's just tired yeah dude the final the final fucking verse i'm tired of all this bullshit tired of uh, tired of all this bullshit telling me to be positive how am i supposed to be positive when i don't see shit positive uh know what i'm saying <laughs> i rap about shit around me shit i see i just it's just fucking i don't know i just it was a good it was a perfect song for me i fucking loved it Wow, it's crazy. So, yeah. Man. Anyways, what's yeah. your number three? Well, that's the number four for me, actually. This is oh, this four, this bad. is when Eminem came back. If, like, uh, if the I need a doctor thing, like, was like, okay, now he's he's here. It was this one is I. This was the first one I haven't heard Eminem at all. So, uh, I need a doctor was the first one I heard him 
after the accents. Mm -hmm. And then this is the first one I heard back. And that is airplanes part two on the BOB song. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't necessarily love that song. And as much as I do love Paramore and Haley Williams, uh, it's not my favorite thing I've heard her sing. And B.O.B.'s uh, lines are cool. The chorus is okay. I'm not saying I, I don't like it. It's just not my favorite. But Eminem's verse, this, this, oh, dude, it, when when he uh, when he goes to this one line, let me find it. He says, he says, let's pretend, pretend Marshall Mathers never picked up a pen. Let's pretend things would have been no different. Pretend he procrastinated, had no made, had no motivation. Pretend he just made excuses that were so paper thin they could blow away with the wind. Marshall, you'll never make it. Makes no sense to play the game. There ain't no way that you'll win. And then this line, pretend he just stand outside all day and play with his friends. Pretend he even had a friend to say was his friend. Like, mm. oh my gosh, when I heard that. And he says, and it wasn't time to move school. We're changing again. He wasn't socially awkward and just strange as a kid. Like, like it's so just straightforward, man. Like you said, yeah, with the last dude. song, like, what the fuck? Like, you, how, do you, how rhymes, is this a song? <laughs> you know? That's what makes him so good is that he rhymes it all together into a song. Like, he makes it, I don't know. He just makes it, he makes it, like, work. That's what makes him good is that he makes the words that he's saying that shit, shit that shouldn't rhyme or how did he come up with the rhyme? Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, how'd you come up with that, dude? Those, all that shit works. It works, dude. In the song. It works. He made it work. And it's just so, so straightforward. And hearing that and then he says he's going to have a hard time explaining to Haley and Laney these food stamps and this wick shit because he never risked shit. He hoped and he wished it, but it didn't fall on his lap. So he ain't even mm. here. It pretends that, <laughs> and then it goes right into the chorus. Like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, it's just, it, I just relate to that so much, man. When I first moved to Vegas, and it's crazy because it's Mike's birthday today. He was the first person mm. in Vegas that actually talked to me. I didn't have nice. any friends for like three years. And it just was like, just focusing on music, just music, just music. And that's what B.O.B.'s whole thing is like, I didn't have a life. I just wrote rhymes all day. And that's what Eminem is saying. He just had no friends and he moved. And yeah, and you were you weird. You with drums. <laughs> yep. And it's just like he wasn't socially awkward as strange as a kid. Like that was me when I moved out here. Also, El Paso dressing like an 80s metal kid growing out my hair. And everyone out here was in a like pop punk and had the same spiky short hair bleached and wearing dickies and skateboard shoes. And I just wasn't that guy and I didn't have friends and I didn't know how to talk to anybody. So I dove into music and that's what he did. And they're telling him mm -hmm. it was a daydream. Just like with me, it's like, Oh, it's a daydream. But I was like, nah, dude, fuck that. You know? And mm -hmm. it's, it, that song is just so it's sick. It's cool. Me. That song was cool. It was, it was just a little cookie cutter for me. I mean, his lyrics weren't, but just the song itself was just like, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, safe. it's definitely a pop song in the format. That, that one. The yeah. Hook. That, that falls into this the same category that a, a lot of songs got eliminated to me. It's like they're really good songs, but they were the, his. I mean, they were really good lyrics, but just the songs themselves. I'm just like, nah, I can't. I can't handle this. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, yeah. man. It's crazy. But let's move on All to right. uh, the last couple here. We're, so we're number almost three. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on number three now. Number three. I I put it on today, and it's still fucking bangs i figured I, I was wondering if this this was gonna hold up a few months after who re was released and that's the kamikaze album but the lucky you and join Locus song still fucking holds up dude the bounce of this song is so good like if you put this song on and you don't bounce your head you don't like hip-hop you should stop listening to hip-hop and rap period because this song is fucking sick it bounces so good and then not to mention the juxtaposition between Joyner Lucas, the up and coming rapper, rapping about all the shit he wants. You know, talking about, it's like, all my life I wanted a Grammy, but I'll probably never get it. You know what I'm trying to say? And then Eminem comes in his part and talks about the shit that he's already done. He's like, I've done one a couple of Grammys, so, but I sold my soul to get them. I wasn't in it for the rec, I mean, for the trophies, just wanted the recognition or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, I, the, and then. Just the back and forth between the two of them. Jordan Lucas coming up and Eminem talking about, oh, I'm already there and I'm not happy. Like, it's so fucking sick, dude. 
So I, I don't really thing. know it too too well, so I have to listen again. You man. gotta listen to that song, dude, because it's it's basically that. It's Jordan Lucas talking about coming up and Eminem talking about him already having it. Damn. It's so sick. so then, from different like, points of view, it's so crazy. Yeah, and it's the the chorus is like, what's it say? Um, um, what's how's the chorus go? Um, y'all gotta move. Y'all gotta move. Give me some room. Give me some room where he's basically trying to like, yo, let me in. I'm going to fuck you. Let me in. I'm trying to be the fucking next guy. You got to move. Get him in, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Totally, yeah. man. Totally. I, I agree with that. And I mentioned my number three earlier, which is Till I Collapse. Um, mm. I don't think it's his, his best work in terms of like with lyrics, like just obliterating you <laughs> and making you feel super uncomfortable, laugh, cry, smile, all these things. It's just it's just a pump up song and I fucking love mm-hmm. it and it just still gets me going to this day and I still like I put it on yeah. today I'm like yeah I don't know I don't know I I get it I get it cuz it's, it, it's it's another one it's another one of those things where it's like damn these lyrics are good but I can't stand the chorus See I, I love it, it though I love it it's so sick Nate dog dude <laughs> give him a boom collab give him. it's like I don't know it's just no, dude, I, like I don't it. like it uh, I don't I, like it it's too it's too I don't know no, I, 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 I understand. I understand, especially for me having it that high. But it's the song I've probably listened to more than any other Eminem song. And yeah. so it's I have to include it because it has so much value in my life. And it does pump me up. And it's about music. And it's about, you know, just trying to be relevant and trying to be good and trying to make people care and trying to do everything you can to make your shit good. And I can relate to that right before I'm about to go on stage. I'm listening to that. I'm like, yeah, go out there and make it count. You know, the way he does with his lines, you got to do that with every time you hit the drum, you got to make it count. So that's, that's what I love about it. So anyways, last two, what's your last two? All right. My number two, we already actually already talked about it. So we can kind of just, you know, skim it. But, uh, Kim is my number two, dude. That fucking song is, (laughs) I can't, you can't put that song under five or, you know, it's top top five Eminem songs. And Kim is my top, definitely top two for you, sure. And I think I think it says a lot. Um, like, I'm, obviously, we just went over it forever, but it says a lot about what kind of listener you are. And for as jaded as I feel sometimes, and as willing you as you are to try new things, you do try things. But when you, you when don't, you, wait, well, wait, when you recognize. That there's something special there that that is not in the box. That this mm-hmm. artist r- really pushed a boundary. That it's gonna it's 100%. gonna resonate with you, and that's what that song did. And we already covered it, so we don't need to again. But man, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Well, uh, dude, one thing I'm noticing though is like you, a lot of your songs have a structure. They have, like, I'm looking at mine, and like, I don't even know how the verse, the choruses go to a lot of them except for the way I am. But if you listen to a lot of the ones I have, it's just, it's just like straightforward songs or straightforward lyrics. I don't know. But anyways, go ahead. What's your number two? Yeah. Uh, and you're probably right. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just cause I just find it in the verses. I don't know. That's why some of them are features, but uh, my number two is the first track. Well, the second track, the first song off Marshall Miller's LP. And that is kill you. When I was just oh, a yeah. little baby yeah. boy, my mama used my to mama tell, used me, these tell me these like, crazy things. She used to tell me my daddy was an evil man. She used to tell, tell me he hated me. me. <laughs> but then I got, I got a little, little bit older and I realized she was the crazy one. one. And there was nothing, <laughs> there was I, nothing could I could do. do to try, to try to see. I can't remember. <laughs> What's up, baby? And, so, and then what about it's like, <laughs> hi. You're live to the hi. world, girls. Although I don't think anyone's watching right now. No, don't eat that. No, don't eat that. That's fine, I guess, but it's probably still. Well, I guess we can't wrap Eminem no more with the babies in the room. No, I was They're gonna about say, to go I was to gonna bed. Gonna we're we're l- almost done. It's like two more minutes. Summer really, really, really wanted to see you. All right. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> they're about to go to sleep. Yeah, dude, but but for me, Kim was that song. I warmed up every single day to it before I went on stage for like four to years. To Kim or to kill to, you? To kill you, sorry. And... It's just it's the same as Kim kind of where it's just like so over yeah. the top, just yeah, so like definitely. ridiculous. Like, I can't believe someone's saying this and making it sound good. And like yep. the and the way he like 
he attacks the norms like you're saying you <laughs> like songs that have structure when he is in the second verse i'll wait till my daughters are out of the room when he says when he says bitch i'm gonna kill you i ain't done this ain't the chorus <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know what i mean love that are dude. you in, like holy crap it's, how could you it's do painting that? outside of the lines dude it's, that's what i love about shit it's like it's painting outside of the lines i hate music that's so structured I, don't get me wrong if it's a good song it's a good song yeah but it, but when you paint outside the lines and it sounds good and it's catchy and it's good oh dude it's my favorite shit ever when something's so unconventional actually that's a bracket that you were doing like just random stuff and one of my entries was when you hear a song that's unconventional and it's good absolutely and that's I why that song that's my like favorite shit. the song was self-aware but like it said no nah, no nah, uh-uh. we're not gonna do this the normal way like wait <laughs> it's like holy crap Cause i can because because i can wait because he fucking is allowed to Dude, you and he's I mean? dude, and then and then the way they it comes said I in. They can't rap about being broke no more. <laughs> they say I can't rap about coke no more. It's like, whoa, dude! Like, holy crap! Like, is he saying wow. all this shit? But, but he's, it's what's gnarly. crazy is he's always he's always responding to like that means he's paying attention to what people say. The only mm-hmm. thing about that though, the only thing about him uh, responding to his criticisms and and responding to the the media and all that shit and being self aware of the time. Is that it does time stamp his music, you know what I mean? Like it does, but this about, this one I don't think is really time stamped though. I mean, there's some no, this, this one, one definitely not this one. No, but there's definitely there's definitely songs like you know like uh, obviously real uh, some shady. What's that? Lose yourself. Lose yourself is not that one can go on forever. That one's timeless. Um, Till I collapse is timeless too. You know those those songs are timeless, but there is a lot like his like cookie cutter like fun singles are time stamped. Yeah. And that's why I, that's is... why that's why I think he didn't like um uh the the accents album a lot like even the single <sighs> on there that's the first time I heard 3 his 3 a.m. 3 a.m. But the the, the was... other single uh I think it was We Made You or whatever when mm. he goes and he starts talking about celebrities and stuff I was like it's like no that's not how you do it that's why when he did Kamikaze it was so like gnarly because right. he came back and he did it but he did it in a way that was so clever and so gnarly and within his yeah. niche. Of, of his name, his his style. You know what I mean, like it. And he but the taught, thing was, he was dressing hip hop, which was amazing. As much as I loved uh, Kamikaze, that that album is time stamped too. Besides a few tracks, like Lucky You is a timeless one. There's that's just simply about an up and coming rapper and verse and a rapper who uh, made it. You know, but yeah. like like that this song, The Ringer, that song, Matt. Well, let's do this in a month, and I don't know if The Ringer would be in my top ten. The right. Ringer's the one where he goes after all the mumble raps. Dude, but um Kill You was close to my top though. I almost put Kill You in there too. Dude, but, but Kill Kill you, you, know. you is like it was just so insane and to start an album that way, it's just like that's his version of a metal album coming out with the the heaviest song right at the beginning. And it's just like he just attacks it and dude he even go he even says, I don't be- I don't even believe in breathing. I'm leaving air in your lungs just to hear you keep screaming for me to see <laughs> it's like or whatever he says. <laughs> like, oh my god. He's like Dude, th- that's what I'm saying. All those lyrics are rid- just like ridiculous. Oh They're so ridiculous. Over the top, the craziest shit I ever heard. Dude, he's- and he makes it sound and he makes it sound crazy like fun, sort of. Like I don't know how to like I'm not gonna go out and slit someone's throat and see him bleed to death or nothing. I'm just saying, he paints a picture and you sit there and you kind of giggle because you're just like you picture a weird skinny dude. guy and calls himself Slim Shady doing all this crazy shit and you're just like, what is he doing? Dude, this guy's nuts. He and says, you're he you're said, watching, you're listening. He straight up even says, you better kill me. I'm gonna be another rapper dead for popping off at the popping mouth with shit mouth I shouldn't have shit said. I shouldn't have said. Yeah. Oh, like he knows, dude. Him, dude. And then he and then he walked around in paranoia. Like I remember watching, yeah. uh, uh, he was on sixty minutes, and they were going over everything on how he writes. He just had this book of just like lyrics scribbled on the top right corners, and then threw it all. And he's just like, "I'm just stacking ammo, man. I'm just stacking mm. ammo." That's what he called it. And so like the 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 guy interviewing him is just an old basic reporter guy. He's like, "Yeah, he's like, it's almost like he." looked at writing songs as going into battle <laughs> it's like it was crazy right and <laughs> but that's a that's a hip-hop mindset though and so, dude and, and and one thing he they said in like the bonus because i went online and i looked at like the bonus coverage that wasn't on the show and they talked about how 
um, when he he went to go see his old house um, mm-hmm. and he's walking by it and stuff and he goes we never stayed at any place for more than like five minutes we had to constantly leave everywhere we went he's like i got a bathroom got to get out of here we got to get out of here and he had this paranoia man it's crazy i'm like damn dude mm-hmm. so to hear him say that in that song is unbelievable man yeah but he yeah go ahead I'm that li- it's just this last line right here he says bitch i'm gonna kill you like a murder weapon i'm gonna conceal you in a closet with mildew sheets pillows and film you with me. I've been through hell. Shut the hell up. I'm trying to develop these pictures of the pictures devil, of the sell. devil, and sell them. <laughs> like, oh what, god. What goes through your mind? How do you write that shit? I don't dude? know. So here we are. Then <sighs> we're finally, we're finally here. We probably took too long on the first. <laughs> so we should have skimmed through the top five or the top and then, ten yeah, and then up, but whatever what's your number uh, one favorite eminem song of all time my number one favorite eminem song and it's totally i know you're gonna call me a hipster but i don't care at over the last like three four years if there was an eminem song that i put on it was always this one and it, it just got put out again because it got remastered and it's from his first cassette and it's called infinite every time i hear that song it puts me in a mindset that like, literally, I, if I was making playlists or something, I would put the song on every playlist I ever make because I love the song. I love the beat. I love. If you want to know the extent of Eminem's, like, lyrical fucking insanity, listen, because this is real backpacky. Like, it's a, I don't know if you know the term backpack rap. I it's sure just, don't. Okay, backpack rap is just people who like rap that's just all about lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. The beat is secondhand. Well, the beat's always good, too, um, but... It's not as important. Like, the hook is not important. It's, what's important is lyrics. Lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. And Infinite, obviously, was Eminem's, you know, debut album. And obviously, when you're a new rapper, you want to show everybody how fucking gnarly you are with the pin. And that's what this song is. It's lyrics are insane. The the um, the um beat is, like, total, like, backpack hip-hop beat. But I love it. Like, if you actually pay attention to the beat itself... It puts you in a mindset. So it's just basically my number one only because because I've listened to this. And it's this song right here out of my whole top ten list. I would probably just, if they were like, hey, what's one Eminem song that you want to hit for the rest of your life? It's infinite. Easily. Wow. So that's it. I, I, I am I'm going gonna, gonna to send you. I am going to call you a hipster, playlist. though. You, you are a hipster. <laughs> Why? Because come on, Why, man. Dude, it's so good, dude. It's so uh, You know what? Good. That's not even fair of me to say because I haven't heard it. And Eminem is... Yeah, I mean, he's far beyond proven you for me to doubt how, this. You can hear how young, you can hear his young voice. Like, he's a young kid in this song, and he was so gnarly back then. He talks about his come up, he talks about battling, he talks about, he basically, this is the one song where he raps about, like, how good he is, you know? Yeah, dude. And, and I mean, you're always one to go with young energy, man. So I got to hear what a young, hungry Eminem sounds I, I'll like. Send, I'll, I'll send you my playlist. And you'll see, you'll probably hate on me tomorrow morning, though. You'll be like, this is the most hip hop fucking hipster playlist ever. But then, but you know, nah. the next day I'll be like, this is great. <laughs> this is amazing. Dude, <laughs> Infinite, seriously, my favorite Eminem song. <laughs> well, you know, to, you know, obviously Eminem fucking lyrics. So this was the one song for me, my number one, is, is one I didn't think would be there. But even when I hear it now, it still genuinely makes me cry. It tears me up. And I was listening to the gym mm, today. I know and which one it is. Again, choked up. And, and it's a song never over. It's from the, the from the was it uh, Recovery album, the last song. I think it's the last you, song or second yeah. to the last song. Um, what's amazing about it is because if you just analyze Eminem's career, first off, before we even arrive at the song, is mm-hmm. he went, he lost his best friend, his career partner, his guy he shares the stage with his is what do you what do you call him like what? hype man the hype man has yeah the hype man and and um so he loses him and goes in this downward spiral in which he dies like Eminem died and came back to life mm-hmm. and he's second guessing his own style of music he's afraid to put things out then he does this accent thing and doesn't know where to go with it and he's he's on the relapse album. In the booklet, he says, 
he says proof, you know, or he's like something along the lines. I'm not going to quote it because I don't remember it. But he says, you know, I, d- I tried to write you a song, but I couldn't think of one that was good enough. So when I heard this song, I was like, oh, my God, like he did it. Like, this is what you do, man. You are a musical artist. This is a part of your life you've never experienced losing someone. Yeah. So you need to put this out and this is your therapy. And he finally did. And so before I even like heard it, heard it when it, once that first thing, when he said, if proof could see me now, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, wow. Like I, this, I know this it's, is gnarly. I, I like the song too. I really do like the song too, but you already know what I'm going to say. This fucking course is atrocious. I cannot listen to it. Well, it's because he, it's because he's not he's not a, a singer. <laughs> That's the truth. I know, and I know, and I find I told you like your number ten song. I was like, okay, I can tell that you really like singing Eminem. I can't do singing you, Eminem. You know dude. what it is? Is because I get it. I just spent about four hours right before we did this listening to myself sing and editing my vocals, and they oh, are God. horrible. <laughs> I can't but imagine. I know what I'm trying to do, so if I could get it close enough to one of my bandmates understanding what I'm trying to do and then get it there. Um, it's cool. And with Eminem, it's like, I don't, I don't need him to be the best singer. Like it's, but I get what you're doing. I, I, I understand. And he doesn't have to be the best singer, but did he really attempt to go living without you? <laughs> like, did, is that what he wanted? Well, it was personal for him. And I don't think he wanted a feature on this song and uh, it just it just had to work and no, i'll just i'll just it i'll just read <laughs> the 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 last part of the last verse because he just has two verses on this one and he says proof you knew i'd come back out of the slump rise from these ashes come right back on the asses and go mike tyson on these bastards and mm-hmm. i'm gonna show them blow them out the water slaughter them homes i'm gonna hold i'm <laughs> I'm on so many. I'm gonna hold so many belts. The only place they can hit me is below them, homie. Mm. I I know I'm never gonna be the same without you. I would have never came into this game. I'm going insane without you. Matter of fact, it was just the other day, or just the other night. I had a dream about you. You told me to get up. I got up. I spread my wings and I flew. You gave me a reason to fight. I was on my way to see you. You told me, nah, duty, you're not. Laying on that table, I knew I was going to make it. Soon as you said, think of Haley, I knew. There wasn't no way that I was ever going to leave them babies and proof. Not many are lucky enough to have a guardian angel like you. Lord, I'm so thankful. Please don't think I don't feel grateful. I do. Just grant me the strength that I need for one more day to get through. So, homie, this is your song. I dedicate this to you. I love you, duty. Like, sick. This is the opposite of everything he does. There's well, yeah, mm-hmm. no, but Eminem does that a lot. And from your list, from what I hear on your list, you really do like introspective Eminem, honest Eminem. You like, uh, you like when he, when he like gives you a glimpse of what he's going through, and you know, and for me personally, all that stuff is good. I just wish there were better songs. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess he might be the only artist that. I truly, truly can get past the quality of a melody, like past the quality, because it, because what... it isn't the be- the best uh, musical thing. Like even Kim, where it's, it's not necessarily even spoken word. It's it's almost like Plus, a cinematic theater type thing, right? Uh, and it's so unconventional, but it's good. Yeah, exactly. It sounds this right here, great. This this is the opposite of what I'm talking about because the way he's singing is like unconventional. And it isn't good. I don't like the course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's for hard to either, get through. Either for me. way, for me though, just it's just it's just the time, the timing of this song. Um, I, I the right yeah. down to the fact that he even says, "Go, Mike Tyson on these bastards." You were there for the rise of my obsession with boxing, so even that grabbed me. And my grandfather mm. passed away like the year after this came out. And I was just going through the depression and, and then just feeling this sort of low. And then as an artist, seeing how he just rose above and just had the bravery to make this song and say, no, this is the song I'm going to make. And and then just, just hearing the the vulnerability in a different way. Like he's not talking about insecurities like he does on other songs and his addictions no, and no. the things he can poke fun a, about himself. But he actually went on and wrote a song for someone else. And right. and it's crazy, man. And I don't know. It's it's just I lo- like I, I said. Know. I love it. 
the the songs that you've picked, the verses on all of them are fantastic. The choruses are just bad. Like this song would have made my list too if the chorus was sung better. Period. Because the the song definitely is the song is at a moment in my life where I could one hundred percent relate to it. But but when then I hear the chorus, it takes me it takes my mindset out. Like Kim, I'm in it all the time. I hear it and I'm fucking in it, you know. And then this one, I'll, I'll you know, this he, he talks about proof in like the first line, and then the chorus comes in. And you're just like, oh, I'm back. Oh, that's right, I'm listening to. It. Terrible yeah. Eminem. Yeah. Well, so, either whatever. either way, it was just it was too beautiful for me to. It's it's my favorite song. It really is. And you know what's you know what's also that one thing like, um, I guess in some ways I can be a hipster for picking this one. Like you, it's it also does feel like not a lot of people know this song, so it's kind of like this mm. is like my personal Eminem song <laughs> almost. You know? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, that's it. That's fucking. Cool. We went through all of it. We did it. No Jordan. I was, I was, I was expecting a fight. That's why I wanted Jordan on here. I was ready for a fight. Well, I'll read you his comment. <laughs> it says, "GD hipster ass bullshit. Fuck Eddie." <laughs> why? Cause he fucking. What's his top three? I lose yourself and uh, still Eminem or still Slim Shady, whatever the fuck that song is. <laughs> Yeah, my it, name is. Oh, Come man, on, dude. It's ridiculous. I mean, how much? How much Eminem has Jordan really listened to? Uh, he hasn't. He's never heard Eminem. Yeah, I yeah don't he's think. a poser. He's a poser. <laughs> oh, hold <laughs> up, Fucking hold poser. up. Let's see if we could. Hold up. He's trying to come on real quick before we get off. Let's uh, let's, oh, let's see if we can add poser. him. Oh, I don't think it's gonna. Oh, oh here, here we go. Here we go. I think it's adding him. Hold on, Jordan. Let me. Let me. I have to add you to the call so you could talk shit to Eddie, and then we gotta go. Boom. Yeah, cause my babies are going to sleep. There it is. It should be adding you. I don't know. I don't think it's going to. Anyways, well, I'm over it. I'm tired. We took too damn yeah. long. But uh, this yeah. was great, though, man. Just uh, this is Eminem in a nutshell. This whole conversation. There are, I've definitely, I can't stop thinking about a lot of uncomfortable moments talking about it. It's like, wait, why do I like <laughs> this song? Like, I, I ain't going to lie. You're letting, you're letting the PC world fucking get to you, dude. Hey, it's, it's in some ways, yes. But in other ways, it's also because, dude, I, I there's a lot you're, of things I don't dad. watch. You're a father now. I'm a dad, dude, and I can't yeah. help it. I can't pull myself out of that, that mindset and just think of like, wow, I like this shit. What? But you know what? I, I get it. He's an artist, and he, he used his art to, to just say what all was on his mind, whether it was wrong or right. He did it, and he was honest with himself. I, I just, and, and for that, I, I commend him if, if for no other reason. You know. I just want to say this. Um, I'm going to send you guys in the group. I'm going to send you my playlist and save that playlist because two years from now, Jordan's going to hit us and be like, oh, my God, dude. Have you guys ever heard that song Infinite from Eminem? It's so good. Because he does that shit to me every fucking time. So fuck you, Jordan. I'm out. <laughs> he says the way I am or Kim ties for first for me. Uh, but yeah, that, that Eminem's just, he's amazing. Everything, this whole conversation was perfect. Like I said, uncomfortable to just admiring the skill set, to admiring the storytelling ability, to admiring the ability. Uh, uh, willingness the to thing, push brown boundaries and to the the career arc, the comebacks, mm -hmm. the rise, the the young you know hunger to to succeed and achieve and like it's just it's he's just a perfect character. He was made for entertainment. It's crazy, man. Yeah, he was good, man. He is pretty good. Definitely. Yeah, he's good. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like wiped out already. <laughs> All right, same here. I got to go. All, All right, right, later, All right, dude. Sure. Right, Great later. chat with you. Later. Peace. Yeah. Later. Yeah. All right, that'll do it. That'll do it. A couple people hung out here and there, came back, left. I'm done. If you guys want, we'll talk about it tomorrow on the uh, uh, Patreon. Like, uh, Watch the regular stream. We'll talk some more Eminem. See what you guys' favorites are, especially since Jordan didn't make it today. Uh, it's yeah, Eminem's Eminem's gnarly, man. Eminem's gnarly in in every he's the most excessive possible extreme case in every every facet of an artist, whether that is negative, positive, uh, 
awkward, uh, vulnerable, bravado, braggadocious. He does it all and does it great. And that's why we listen because the talent is is unmatched. Uh, is he the GOAT? He says so. I might have to agree. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Patreon.com slash A-Rob. Support. Later.